All right, so welcome. We're going to run through the forces static equilibrium problem that we're setting up for our lab. And so in case you missed this day in class, I'm going to run through it here in this video. So what I have is I have not only just one object hanging from two strings, now I have two objects hanging from two strings. So I have multiple masses involved here. And so there will be a common force of T2. This is our third law pair between them. And so what I'll have is I'll have one unknown. I don't know the tension. Two, three, three unknowns. I don't know the tensions. And I don't know this unknown mass. So our goal is to figure out this unknown mass. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is start with a free body diagram. So here I have drawn our forces. So I have T1 and it's a tension so it acts up and away. T2, T2, T3, and of course we can't forget gravity. So we have mg's acting down. So this one is 0.5 kilograms times 9.8. And this one is just mg, so this is m times 9.8. So you'll see that these tensions are all at angles. So of course we're going to need to resolve them into components. So there's going to be an X component and a Y component. Now, when I drew these lines behind here, I was measuring the angles with this protractor. So as you can see, it's extremely accurate. Um, but because of the size of everything, I feel pretty confident that I knew these angles within a half a degree. So I'm saying this is 48 degrees, uh, not much more off than 48 and a half or 47 and a half. I'm pretty confident it's in that range. And we're going to use that to kind of give us a number and say, all right, how close is the number we calculate for this mass to figure that out? So as I go with this 9 degrees here, so this one here is going to be T2 cosine of 9 and T2 sine of 9. I've got to do the same thing over here for these components. So I have T1 cosine of 60 and T1 sine of 60. We'll go ahead and make a new free body diagram. I like to draw one after I've resolved things into components just to get a feel for what's all there. So I have the 0.5 times 9.8, which is 4.9. And then I have my T2 cosine of 9. I have my T2 sine of 9. My T1 sine of 60. And my T1 cosine of 60. From this free body diagram, I can generate two equations, an x equation and a y equation. This is a first law problem. We are in equilibrium, specifically static equilibrium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate that equation now. So in the x direction, I have T2 cosine of 9 minus T1 cosine of 60 equals 0. In the y direction, I have T2 sine of 9 plus T1 sine of 60 minus that 4.9 number down there. Now, instead of saying minus 4.9, because I'm going to set this into a matrix, I'm going to want to have this minus 4.9. I'm going to move it over to that side with the 0. Okay? 4.9. Right. And again, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to use a matrix as well in this video. All right, so I have my first two equations created. So now I need to create my second two equations. So that goes by free body diagram over here. So again, we are going to resolve these into components. So I have T2 cosine of 9, T2 sine of 9, T3 sine of 48, T3 cosine of 48. Redraw that down on my picture just so I can see everything that's going on here. So I have T3 cosine of 48, T3 sine of 48. Now I'm watching these arrows. Notice this T2 sine of 9 is actually pointing down. So when I get to that, I need to make sure I have it in the correct direction. So that T2 sine of 9 is actually pointing down. That's going to influence how I write that equation over there. And I also have this unknown mass times 9.8. So now I need to come back over here and generate those equations. So in my x direction, I have T3 cosine of 48 minus T2 cosine of 9 equals 0. And in the y direction, I have T3 sine of 48 
minus T2 sine of 9 minus M times 9.8 equals 0. So now I'm ready to create my matrix. So we're going to be using polysimal 2, which requires us to go ahead and put in the coefficients for each variable, and then I have variables on one side of my equation, numbers on the other side. So my first equation, variables, 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 numbers on this side. So if there is a variable in there like a T1 or a T2, it's got to be on that side. If it's just a sole number, that's when I move it to the right side. So you'll notice again, variable, variable, number, variable, 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 number. We're good. And so now when I write out my matrix, all I need to do is put in the coefficients for each of those terms. So T1, you'll notice, is multiplied by negative cosine of 60. So I have negative cosine of 60. T2 is multiplied by the cosine of 9. There is no T3 term, so it must be multiplied by 0. There's no M term, 0, and it all equals 0. Fill in my next one, so now I have the sine of 60, the sine of 9, 0, 0, 4.9. Next equation, there is no T1 term, so I got a 0 there. And then T2 is negative cosine of 9, and I have cosine of 48. 0, 0. I have the negative sine of 9 because it's pointing down. It has that negative sign with it. And then I have the sine of 48. And then m is multiplied by negative 9.8 equals 0. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and we are going to plug these numbers in on our calculator and we're going to figure out what is that mass. So we're going to take a quick second here and I'm going to bring you into that calculator view and we're going to take a look at that. Alright, so now it's time to type this equation into our calculator. So we've written it down. We have everything in the right place. So we have a column for T1, a column for T2, a column for T3, a column for M. So those are all our unknowns. And we have that all equal to a column for numbers. And so we have our four equations, which would be our four rows, and our four unknowns, and our numbers column. So we're going to go ahead and go to apps and we're going to scroll down to polysimult2. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just kind of load into here. We're going to go down to simultaneous equation solver. Uh, you'll notice that we have four equations and four unknowns so we just got to get that set up here. I definitely want a decimal answer. I want to be in degree mode as well because I'm going to be using like 9 degrees, 60 degrees. I'm going to hit next. Now I get to type this in, so I'm going to do this real quick. All right, now that we have everything typed in, we're going to go ahead and hit solve. And then it gives us our answers here. So x1 goes along with t1, so the t1 value is 5.1 newtons, t2 is 2.6 newtons, t3 is 3.87 newtons, and the number we're really looking for here is the 0.2518, so we're just going to call that about 252 grams. All right, let's head back to the board. All right, now that we've seen how to put that into our calculator, let's write down those numbers that we get. So when I use the actual angles, I'm going to get an average value of about 252 grams. Okay, I don't want to use too many sig figs here because really I was about at two sig figs on my um, angles. All right. So now I'm going to go down to my high and my low. And so to figure out the high and the low, we're going to have to go put that all back into that matrix again. Um, but if I wanted, I was just off on these angles. Maybe I was off by half a degree. Well, I can't just add a half a degree to each one to get the maximum mass or subtract a half a degree from each one. So what I do is if I pull this down ever so slightly, you'll notice something happening to these angles. And if the line gets more vertical, that means my angle is getting bigger. So in this case, that angle is getting larger. So to get a higher mass, I actually have to add to this one. So higher, I'm going to write in red, and so I'm going to have to add 0.5 degrees. 
But when I pull this down, you'll notice the center line gets more horizontal, so I'm going to have to subtract 0.5 degrees from these. And looking at this one, is this getting more vertical or more horizontal? Oh, it's getting more horizontal, so that means I'm subtracting. So to get my high value, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to redo those calculations, but now with like 59.5, 8.5, 8.5, and 48. So let's go ahead and do those calculations. So I already did them, of course, and I got something like 266. So I have 266 grams for a high. Now I'm going to do it for the low, and that's going to be the exact opposite. So to do the low values, I'm going to have to subtract 0.5 degrees, add 0.5 degrees, add 0.5 degrees, add 0.5 degrees. Now the reason I'm doing this adding and subtracting is to see What's a reasonable answer? Because I can actually get out the scale and mass this thing and see how I did. So when I get my low values in there, I got an answer of about 239. So I got 239 grams. So that means I figured out the mass to be about 252 grams. And it can be within this range. So one thing I can do is I can say, well, what's the difference between these two numbers? And it turns out that that difference is about 27 grams. And so I have a range of about 27 grams. And half of 27 is like 13 and a half. So we're just going to call it 14 grams because we're going to round a little bit here. So I'm going to say plus or minus 14 grams. So what I'm saying is I think based on my measurements with this protractor, that this mass over here is about 252 grams plus or minus 14 grams. Now, there's going to be some percent error between the value I have here and the actual value of this mass. So let's go ahead and take this over to our mass balance and go ahead and mass it. All right, let's go ahead and toss this on the scale, see what we get here. Looks like about 253 grams. Perfect. All right, we got our mass. It was 253 grams-ish. So 253 grams, that's looking good. I thought it was gonna be 252 plus or minus 14. Turns out I was only off by a gram. So even though there was a percent error, that percent error was well within my margin of acceptable error. And so I'd say I did a pretty good job in measuring this correctly. So that is how we're going to do the lab, um, just a walkthrough of that in case you missed it in class.